Hello guys, and today on Prickless, I present you, as promised a long time ago, the third part of the Viking Village expansion series. I have already introduced you to two phenomenal expansions of the LEGO Ideas Viking Village set. However, these were quite small and sometimes only consisted of one or two smaller modules. Today, to round off the series, I'm presenting the largest expansion so far. Like the expansion from my last video, this one was created by the mock designer Lux Bricks. For this you need another 21343 set and the building instructions which are available for 12 US dollars. The expansion consists out of 1915 out of the 2105 supplied parts from the original set and are divided into two modules which are attached next to the modules of the original set. The first module is a granary and the second is an extension of the forge module. Now let's build the modules together. First we build the granary module. Here we build a basic triangular shape and once the basic shape is in place, we equip it with various plates and parts of the rock structure. A square section is delimited on the basic shape, on which we place the granary house in a later step. Once the basic shape is in place, we start building a small cave in which some parts are used to symbolize copper. Then we start building a small snow-covered rock. When we have finished building the small rock, we come to the crown structure, consisting of smaller and larger oval-shaped parts in many different shades of grey. Next we build a small fireplace with a nice roof, after which we continue with the small granary house. The house will be built on three 4x8 plates and once we have raised it and fixed it with windows and walls, we will fill it with a few details. A shelf full of various utensils and food. A smaller table with some more food and two barrels that lay next to it on the floor. Now we round off the left open studs and start with building the roof. Once we have finished the roof, it is simply placed on top of the house. Now we need to build a small roof for the outside of the module and lean it against the side of the house using a small support beam. The only thing missing is a small table with food, which is attached to a stud next to the house on the outside. A small fishing net, the imposing city gate, which is decorated with printed shields and surrounded by fences, and the last but not least, two snow-covered trees to the left and right of it. That's it for the construction of our first module. Let's take a quick look at it. The mock designer calls this module the granary. I would rather call the module the village center. Because it not only offers the granary, but also the largest area of the entire village if we connect all the modules together. I would like to start directly in front of the granary. There's a small fishing net on the footbridge using a familiar building technique that the designer has used in his previous models as well. The large open area of the village offers a lot of space and is littered with details. The crown for example is covered with stones, snow and plants. You can recreate wonderful scenes here, especially in front of the small fireplace, which is also covered. Then we come to the granary. Outside there's a small table covered with food and utensils. A very nice detail is also the supported roof here, which is actually integrated into the structure of the house. I 
under the roof we find an open window. It reminds me a little bit of a drive-thru. Theoretically you can even close the window with the help of the roof if you move the other things out of the way, but I don't know if that was planned by the designer. If we now want to look into the granary, we can simply remove the roof. I've noticed that it doesn't fit smoothly on the house, but you can also look in through the front door. The door frame was very nicely designed. In the house we find several shelves with food and cooking utensils, as well as these two barrels which are probably used to store the crane. The house shares the same familiar design as the houses from the original set. Behind the house is a small cave, which gives the whole module even more depth. The rear is closed off with a large, beautifully designed gate decorated all around with printed pieces such as these shields or these signs. There's a tree to the left and right of the gate and a raised hill on the right hand side to provide the villagers with additional protection. Let's quickly connect this part to the original set. It fits exactly between the right side of the chief's house and the watchtower. Incidentally, the small covered fireplace creates a flawless transition to the chieftain's house and merges into the house to become a part of it. Of course, the second part is still missing, so let's build it quickly now. The second part is also designed in a more angular shape, however it is a little smaller than the first one. Once the basic structure is in place, we build the first details directly on top of it, such as the small pond, the complete footbridge and the large rock behind it, which is full of small details. Now we'll add another fishnet to the pond and the floor structure. The hollow center is then filled with the house, which we are now building. A small forge table with a sword on it is placed in the house. Now we are raising the walls and placing both firewood and a small roof on the outside of the house. The next step is to build the roof, which we attach to the house before we get to the final finishing touches of the module. Below that we add details on the footbridge in the form of a small fence, this beautiful watchtower and finally a small fishing net. Now let's take a closer look at module number 2. According to the designer, this is an extension of the forge module from the original set. It consists of a pond, a blacksmith's hut and a large footbridge on which a watchtower rises. Let's start with the forecourt. There's a small pond behind the footbridge. In the pond we find a popular fishing net the designer likes to use so often. The pond has been beautifully integrated into the ground structure of the module. Next, let's take a look at the blacksmith's hut. The roof can be removed as usual, allowing us to see the inside. Here we find a small forge table with space for a sword, a painted hammer and a fireplace right next to it. The chimney from which the steam flows out was taken into account when building the roof as there is a small notch so that we can snap the roof onto the chimney. The house also has a door. If we go to the back, we find a small roof on the cottage that keeps the firewood dry. A very beautiful detail and in addition to the firewood, there's also an axe attached to the hut which we can use to chop the wood on the log that is standing on the forecourt.
The footbridge at the back of the module is also worth seeing. It is surrounded by a wooden gate and decorated with wooden pillars. A large watchtower rises up on the footbridge. You can get up there by climbing the ladder over the hill. The watchtower itself is designed very nicely. It is decorated with printed shield pieces and a flag that sits on top of the roof. However, I particularly like the mountain, which is very detailed. It finds its place right between the chief's hut and the forge module. That was it for the second module. Let's now combine it with the other modules. What do you think? All the modules combined look great. It now looks all the more like a huge viking village and with the four minifigures that we now have in duplicate from the second set, it's all the more lively. Now you're probably wondering whether you can combine the old modules, which I've shown you in my previous videos, with the complete new set. Let's just find it out together. These three modules here fit on the left side of the village without any problem. I'm only having trouble with this module right here, as the fireplace is almost the same as the one in the granary and was actually intended to be connected directly to the chief's house. You could modify it a little and move it to the other side if necessary. Let's see if that works. So it turns out that it actually worked. I modified the module and simply moved the fireplace to the other side. Now you can connect all modules to the rest. I just had to adjust the layout a bit. I can't even fit everything in one picture without giving you a look behind the scenes. All modules together are a whopping 37.4 inch long. And what would a village full of Vikings be without the right ship? The ship and the water snake from the set 31132 really bring the village to life. What do you think? I had a lot of fun with the expansion, especially with the construction. It was very clear and varied, which is not always the case with such big models. The designer did a wonderful job of using the parts that were available to him and has left virtually no part unused. Anyone who likes the Viking Village will love this expansion even more. The Viking Village is one of the best LEGO sets in terms of value for money anyway, so you can justify the purchase of the two sets you need for the complete layout all the more. I also think it's very cool that you can connect the other modules to the rest. That definitely invites future expansions. Check out Looks Bricks if you like his mock. I also appreciate support in the form of a like and or a subscription. That's it for today on Brickless. If you have any requests for what I can show you next, please let me know in the comments. Take care guys, bye.